Assalamu alaikum students, this is Dr. Imran Khatri, Associate Professor, Department of Entomology, Sindh Agriculture University, Tandujan. Today, uh, topic of our lecture is role of fauna of British India. Now, this is the map of Indian Empire. Uh, British rule India from uh, 18... 57 to 1947 and Pakistan also included in this. Now I would like to show you a glimpse of the Queen of the British Raj. On my, On my 25th birthday, birthday I, welcome I welcome the opportunity to speak to, speak to all the people of the British, British Commonwealth and Empire, wherever, wherever they, they live, live whatever race they come from, and whatever language they speak. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family. Since British helped out uh, Indian subcontinent in various ways, the developed railway system here we can see here the railway system established that is still running same lines or is still present we are using today They established the education, they established more than 20 universities within Indian subcontinent. They established vaccination system within India. They established irrigation system during British Raj. Pariyar Canal System, Upper Ganga Canal, Pariyar Dam, Ganga Dwari Delta System, and Indus River System, and so on. The fauna of British India, including Ceylon and Burma, is a series of scientific books that was published by British government in India and printed by Taylor and Francis of London. The series was started somewhat in 1881 after a letter had been sent to the Secretary of State for India signed by Charles Darwin Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker and other eminent men of science, forwarded by P. L. Scalator to R. H. Hobart. W. T. Blandford was appointed as editor and began work on volume on mammals. Now this is the British Empire. British Raj surveyed and conducted work on British India, including existing Pakistan. Remember, we do not have separate series found of Pakistan. We can only find our old insect fauna in these volumes. These volumes, you can see here, these volumes for our territory Pakistan. If we need to know the insects of our country, we will have to go through these volumes and find out where our insects are present or described. Now Wikipedia is the best place to go through the fauna of British India, including Ceylon and Burma. You can see here 
all the details are available on this page even uh, you can find all the volumes for example here hemiptera protozoa crustacea mollusca hemiptera hemiptera and so on you see here these are the external links we will try for a one link to see what happens here now we are trying for hymenoptera now we have written here baluchistan we are trying to find out baluchistan in this volume of hymenoptera you see here where this Balochistan is present. Yes, it is showing that at several places this Balochistan is present. It means we can find our insects if we write Punjab, Balochistan, Sindh, Hyderabad or any other locality. So we can find our insect. They might be described in these volumes. We have a very good option of uh, enlarging the thing is that in fauna of British India they describe insects in text and just provide only single picture of insect so we can have only external features of insect importance of male genitalia now it was Edward Baker in 1878 when he was studying Tiflosaiba he found that there were several insects present externally similar but when he dissected these insects he found that these all were different so he concluded that the male genital part has very importance in separation of species so the rule became followed by other subsequent authors and well established and is the basis of the modern taxonomy now this is the complete picture I hope you will understand it. This picture is taken from fauna of British India. You see here the text is available and uh, the adult habitus image is available. Later on several scientists started giving pictures. This is also acceptable by some authors and by some journals the latter uh, explanation given by Edward Baker in 1878 that male genital complex has very much importance in describing a species so this is the picture according to the phenomena or method provided by Edward Baker that all the genital pictures are provided this is Ediagus, this is pygophore and male genital plates, face, wings and the female genital complex is also given here so uh, there will be very little chance uh, for the 
misidentification of any species. Now, if we look at the uh, modern system of taxonomy, uh, it lacks in the fauna of British India. We cannot find the genital images in the fauna of British India. So definitely, if we want to see the genitalia of any specimen, we will have to uh, borrow a specimen or visit the Natural History Museum and dissect the specimen and compare with your specimens to confirm it. When we compare our specimens in fauna of British India, two things are very important. Number one, we must have paper that may have published genitalia so that we may compare and confirm it or we may borrow holotype to compare our specimen with original specimen. Okay, now uh, here is the story of uh, holotype. Now I would like to tell the simple definition of holotype. The single specimen designated as the type by the original author at the time of publication of the original description is called as holotype. Now uh, we are trying to understand it stepwise, okay? Now step one, you collect a specimen, right? You study specimen characteristics You compare your characteristics with the literature. Now you are lucky that you did not find any uh, literature compared with your specimen. Now you start working on to publish it. For publishing, you must write its characteristics, line drawings, and so on, whatever is the necessary. Letter, select a good journals, reputed journals like Zootaxa, Zoo Systema, Zoo Keys, and so on. Finally, when you have written everything about your specimen, that is the male specimen, you give red tag to your specimen and this specimen for the whole life will be called as holotype. So this is the story of holotype that you have published it. Now I would like to repeat this sentence, this definition for you. The single specimen designated as the type by the original author, it means you, at the time of publication, when you published it, the original description is called as holotype. Remember, holotype always has red color tag. 
so that it can be identified or distinguished from several specimens within the museum. Now question is that how to access holotypes which are present in fauna of British India. Definitely in fauna of British India several specimens new species are described in that so we would like to see those specimens where are they at the moment they are present at British Museum of Natural History London this is the place where these all holotypes are present Since the series was compiled by entomologists of British Museum of Natural History, London, so all the holotypes are deposited there. Either you can borrow, you can visit British Museum of Natural History, London to confirm your specimens. This is the inner view of the Natural History Museum. Now this is the department of entomology where all the specimens are deposited. This is me during uh, the work at the Natural History Museum London. And uh, this is my, uh, these are my teachers. Now, why fauna of British India is important for entomologists? because it contains plenty of described species from present boundaries of Pakistan. Several new species are also described from present boundaries of Pakistan. Now, few things to remember. When fauna of British India was written, there was no existence of Pakistan. Fauna of British India was started in 1881. Pakistan came into existence in 1947. Thank you so much for watching this video.